Hello, I'm Sarah from Sewing with Sarah, and I'm excited to bring you the Cavallo Tight Sew Along this week. Um, if you follow my blog, you know I've done quite a few sew alongs in the past, and um, it's been a while. So um, I'm excited to welcome you to my new sewing room. Um, we moved houses um, during the last few months, and so um, I've been able to finally get set up here and um, I was just really looking forward to um, doing another sew along and giving myself another excuse to make some more cavallo tights and um, maybe helping you walk along through it as well. So um, I'm going to kind of try to do quite a few things in the sew along. Um, one thing that I heard that would be helpful um, was from beginners who just you know needed um, you know helps choosing fabric, talking about stitch types, um, as you can see, I have a variety of machines behind me, um, but if you're working just from a sewing machine um, and you don't have a serger or cover stitch, I'm going to talk a lot about um, making that work and making that um, work for making some awesome athletic tights. So I'm going to talk about that as part of the sew along, as well as some of you who may have gotten a kind of quarantine sew present of a cover stitch machine. Or maybe you've had a cover stitch machine for a while and you've been afraid to take it out of the box or really put it through its paces. I'm going to be talking about my cover stitch machine quite a bit as well. Um, I'll also be having some bonus videos that focus specifically on cover stitch as part of this process. So um, make sure to keep a lookout for those. Um, but in general, I'm just really excited to sew the cavallo tights with you. This is a pattern that I tested this past spring. And I really, um, you know, enjoyed wearing mine quite a bit. I thought I was a pretty big loyalist to the Inspire tights uh, or to the Super G's, but then the Cavallos came along, and um, now I find myself just wanting to make uh, repeated iterations of Cavallo tights. So um, I just really felt like this was a great pattern to be sharing. It's also a really fun pattern because it has a lot of details that look complex, like the pockets and the different options, but um, in reality, they're actually quite fast to construct once you get the hang of them. So um, like I said, I'm excited to share them with you. Today, we're gonna just be talking about that kind of information that you need to get started um, on the Cavallo tights. So they're a PDF pattern, they're a download from Green Style Creations. Um, if you have a projector, um, which I do, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, but um, there is a projector file. You can print a PDF, you can print an A4, you can even have it printed on a large scale printer if that's something that's available to you. Um, so those are quite a few different options in order to um, get these on your cutting table. So we have a code um, for the Cavallo tights that I'll be posting in my blog post, so make sure you check that out for a discount. Um, and we also have um, some different sew along prizes that I'll be offering um, throughout this process. So um, keep up with this in the Fabric Fairy group. If you're coming to it after the fact, just enjoy the videos um, and sewing along and just know that I'm, I'll try to always be available as a resource um, via my blog for answering questions. Okay, so um, let's talk about the most important thing, <laughs> the kind of the supplies that you need for the Cavallo tights. Um, there are a few different things you need. Um, number one, obviously, being fabric. So the Cavallo tights are designed for fabric with 75% horizontal stretch, so side to side, and 50% vertical stretch up and down. Um, now, I will tell you that my most comfortable tights have 75% four-way stretch. So um, they will definitely work in a pattern or in a fabric that only has 50% vertical stretch but I'm going to strongly recommend to you to try to find something with 75% four-way stretch because to me that just increases the comfort quite a bit. Um, that means like when you're bending your knees and things like that, um, that you just have plenty of range of motion. And part of that determination is how are you going to be wearing these? If you're gonna be wearing them as an athletic tight um, for running, spinning, you know, whatnot, um, then you're definitely gonna want as much a stretch as you can get really. Um, but if you're gonna wear them more for an everyday type, then maybe, you know, 50% um, vertical stretch is gonna be just fine. Um, now, in terms of um, recovery, you know, not, not all fabrics are created equal with regard to recovery. So it's not only important how much a fabric stretches, but it's also really critical how it recovers. So when you take a look at your fabric, and I've got um, some of the um, sage green Olympus here, from the fabric fairy. So you can gauge its stretch. Now you wanna make sure that your 
you're working with the area with the most stretch, but let's just say you, you stretch your fabric, okay? And then see how it recovers. Does it kind of bag out when it does it? Check the other side as well. Stretch and recover. So you can see this is really nice fabric. This, this is perfect um, for the um, Cavallo tights. So whatever it does when you stretch and have it recover is what it's going to do on you. So sometimes we get questions about, you know, is double brush poly great for leggings? Is, um, you know, rayon spandex, can I make, you know, um, athletic wear out of that? Um, and the answer is, is what it does when you stretch it is what it's going to do on your body. So for example, rayon spandex kind of has a, a reputation for growing. So when you wear it, it feels like it fits, you know, kind of tight at first, and then it starts to kind of loosen up. That's not something you really want in athletic wear or in, in tights. So um, that's something you're gonna wanna watch for is the recovery. Uh, another Fabric Fairy does have swatches that you can order. So if you're kind of wanting to test that for yourself, that's one option. Um, here is the, this is another one of my favorite Fabric Fairy fabrics. This is the Zen um, Athletic. And so this just has some amazing stretch. So stretch it, goes right back stretch it, same thing, goes right back the other direction. So you're gonna wanna do those tests. Um, now I'm going to encourage you to make a muslin, a test garment um, from a similar fabric. I think one of the things that people struggle with a little bit when they make a muslin is that um, they don't wanna use their good fabric, understandably, right? Um, because your good fabric usually costs more money or maybe it's special to you, looks, has a certain look or a certain print. Um, but if you don't choose a fabric with similar spandex content and stretch and recovery, what you're going to end up with is, is a garment that doesn't necessarily fit the same way that your, your final fabric is going to have um, fit wise. So um, make sure you keep that in mind. You know, I would say, you know, it is, you know, in general kind of worth it to just order an extra yard of your final fabric and give that a try. Um, now, fortunately, the Cavallo tights are pretty, you know, pretty good in terms of fabric. They, they don't take, you know, more than a yard, yard and a half, depending on your size and your length options and so on. Um, so in that way, they're pretty economical. Based on the color blocking, you can also mix and match fabrics. So, um, you know, I keep a bin of scraps and those are the kinds of things that um, I would use maybe if I needed to color block in um, and didn't want to use up, you know, entire yard of, of fashion fabric. So fabric's gonna go be important. Um, now I typically prefer using a lighter weight um, athletic knit. If I'm using a heavier weight fabric, like um, the Zen is a little heavier, I'll use a lighter weight fabric um, for the waistband lining. And again, that's kind of where I read my scrap bin. You can use the same fabric, but um, that's just an option. If you want to use um, power mesh as something else to consider, if you really want to kind of be held in, um, by the high-rise version of the Cavallo tights, then you may want to add some power mesh into your waistband. Um, but as far as fabrics go, that's what you're going to be looking for. Um, now, some other things that you need to sew these, um, at, you know, the minimum, just a regular sewing machine. If you have a serger and a cover stitch, I'll be talking about how I use those. Um, a rotary cutter is always really helpful when it comes to cutting out your fabric. Um, ballpoint or stretch needles, um, not only in your sewing machine, but also if you have a serger or cover stitch machine, um, I will link my favorite sizes and needle brands in my blog post, but that's going to be necessary. Um, something else, if you're, especially if you're doing those um, writing patches, basting spray. So for the writing patches, you're gonna to wanna to have like a stretch suede or some sort of fabric like that. And again, I'll link something um, that would work, you know, a stretch suede that type of fabric that would work. Um, you could also use like a stretch, um, you know, leather or stretch faux leather if you have a, um, access to that. Um, but this basting spray um, is going to save you kind of pinning, you know, the area. Um, and it'll just kind of keep things in place. It's also kind of handy for um, parts that you really want to line up well. Um, you know, there's a spot on the back of the leggings where um, the curves meet, and if you put a little basting spray on that, then you can make sure that um, they line up. So this is just something that I, I snagged from uh, my local quilting store. Um, there's a couple different brands of this, so I'll, I'll link some that are available on Amazon, or you can find it probably locally as well depending on what your, your local availability is.
So that, um, you know, just the needles, the fabric, um, fabric for the patches if you're going to be using them, and then, you know, the basting spray if you're going to want to be able to put those on um, without pinning. Those are some other notions. Of course, your typical iron. Honestly, I don't typically like iron or press my athletic wear um, when I'm wearing it, but that is something that you may want to have available depending on how, um, how you sew. And then, you know, just clips or pins or something like that um, are helpful. So what I'm going to talk about next are pattern alterations. Okay. So we've talked about supplies. Um, next I'm going to talk about pattern alterations and pattern options. So I'm going to take you over to my cutting table so you can see, um, the alterations and we'll go from there. Okay, so in this version of the video, I'm going to talk to you about some of the different options that are available on the Cavallo leggings, and I'm also going to talk to you a bit about fitting. So the first thing I want to discuss are the options that are included in the Cavallo pattern, and some of the things that you might want to consider adding yourself. The first thing that you're going to want to consider is the length that you're going to want to use. Now, green style includes a shorts cut line. So you can make shorts. They also include a cropped length cut line and a full length cut line. We'll talk about fitting in a minute, but green style drafts for an inseam of about 32 inches or five feet, eight inches tall. So your personal inseam may dictate whether you want to lengthen or shorten these pieces, but in general, just start to think about, do I want to make a pair of shorts? Do I want something to be cropped? Or do I want something to be full length? Okay. And you can cut in between these lines as well. If you want a longer pair of shorts, you can certainly cut a shorts uh, line below. You're just going to want to keep in mind that the shorts cut line that's indicated on the pattern, one, eliminates the option for the writing patch because it's above that. And two, that that shorts option is also reflected on the leggings insert as well as the pockets. So if you're going to be making custom cup lines for the shorts, you may be affecting the length of the pockets as well. So make sure to keep that in mind. Okay, so that's length. The next option that we're going to want to consider are those writing patches. Are you going to be adding those? If you are, I would take your scissors at this point and cut around so that you have this piece removed so that when you go to cut your fabric, you can mark that with a chalk up liner or a pen or something similar, okay? I also like the friction markers. So if you're going to be adding the patches, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the patch pattern piece available as well as your stretch suede or similar fabric. The next option that you're going to want to consider on the Cavallo leggings is the type of pocket. There are two pocket types available. The first one is the slant pocket and the second one is the scoop pocket. Um, now you can see that on the scoop pocket it does you know, kind of rise higher. And there's options for a lower front rise and a higher rise on the scoop pocket, whereas the slant pocket doesn't have that option. You'll also notice that there's a second line, a little bit down from the top line on both pocket types. That is going to be another option in the pattern um, that you have the ability to choose whether you want to add a band or binding. If you want to add a band or a binding to finish the pocket, you're going to want to cut on the lower line, okay, of either pocket. You're not cutting both of these, you're choosing between them. And they each come with their own pocket binding piece. If you are not using a cover stitch machine and you are planning on hemming, I would really recommend that you do that with a zigzag stitch. I prefer to do a binding, um, and I'll link in my blog post further on a video for how to do some really um, professional looking binding that's pretty easy, pretty easy technique. Um, so that's my preference. You could also use a band just by cutting the same piece and then folding it in half. Um, so there are separate pieces for the binding um, for the scoop versus the slant pocket. 
So those are some of the other options that you'll want to consider is what type of pocket do I want to add? Regardless of the type of pocket that you choose, you're going to cut the same leggings insert. Okay. Now, again, rise is another option that we want to consider. So on the main pattern piece, there's an option for a high rise and a lower front rise. This is the rise below the waistband. There's a separate rise option on the waistband pattern pieces, but you can choose either one here, either the high rise or the lower front rise, okay? And if you are making one of those choices, you're gonna to wanna to cut the corresponding high rise or lower front rise on the insert as well as on that scoop pocket, if you're adding the scoop pocket, okay? So that's something to consider. The other thing to consider is the type of waistband that you want to add. You have an option for a symmetrical waistband, meaning the waistband is the same width front and back, or an asymmetrical waistband, in which case you'll have a smaller front waistband piece and a larger back waistband piece that wraps around the front of the body a bit. On these waistband pieces, both types offer an ultra high rise or a high rise. The ultra high rise is gonna go a couple inches above your belly button, especially depending on what type of pants rise you pair that with. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so you're gonna choose one of those types of waistbands and then you're going to choose a rise. Now the waistband pieces all come with an outer back, like an outer waistband and an inner waistband. Um, so you're gonna need one set of each, outer and inner front, outer and inner back, or outer and inner symmetrical waistband. Watch it, right? There's my other symmetrical waistband piece. The inner waistband is going to be a tiny bit, stuck the inner on top, tiny bit shorter than the outer, and this makes the waistband roll really nicely so you don't see that seam at the top. So those are going to be your main options length, patches, waistband, pocket type, and then rise, okay? So now that we've talked a bit about the pattern options, I wanna talk to you about fitting. So as I mentioned, green style drafts are about a five foot eight inch height or 32 inch inseam. And if you are significantly shorter or taller than that, you're going to want to make adjustments. The general rule is that for every two inches, you're going to adjust an inch. So if you are four inches shorter than the pattern is um, drafted for, you're gonna adjust two inches out of your pattern. And if you're doing more than about an inch and a half in adjustments, I would recommend doing that in two places. So the pattern has length and shortened lines. So you're gonna take those length and shortened lines, use a ruler, draw a line across, and then either overlap or spread the pattern pieces at those places. So there's one up at the top and there's one down here at the bottom. If you're using a line that's going to intersect with those pocket pieces, so you can see how the pocket pieces kind of go here along the side. If you're using this top length and shortened line, you'll find corresponding length and shortened lines on the pocket and insert pieces. So you're gonna want to, whatever you do to the main pants piece, you're gonna want to do to those pieces as well, okay? So that's adjusting for length. Now, if you want to make some other types of adjustments, um, these are kind of a unique pattern piece in that they're not split, like you would typically have a front pattern piece and a back pattern piece. Um, so there is that rise adjustment that you can consider if you tend to have a shorter or a longer rise. If you have a, a fuller tummy, I would recommend doing a higher rise um, just to kind of give yourself a little bit of extra room there. There is an option to um, that I've drawn in here that can kind of show you that you could slash and then hinge this apart for a, fully, for, uh, for a more round tummy. Um, you could also do the same thing with the back. So you could slash, keep it the same at the same seam and hinge it apart for a fuller um, seat or overlap it even for a flat seat. If you find that you're getting a bit of a camel toe, you may want to scoop out the pattern a bit here 
And I also find that I like to lower the rise just a little bit by trimming off a bit right here. So that's my personal adjustment. And honestly, that is the only personal adjustment that I make to these pants. Um, I cut the higher rise, but I shorten this part a little bit. Um, and then I cut the cropped length. I don't make any other adjustments and that works for me, but I would strongly recommend making a muslin, making a test garment, um, and just knowing that, um, you know, I made quite a few pairs of green style leggings, so I didn't come to those fit conclusions overnight. Um, and I'm still making little adjustments um, as my body changes and just as my preferences change and as I learn more about fitting. So I don't have any real magic fitting bullets other than to just encourage you to be patient with the process, to try some different things, to see what they do. Um, make sure that you're using good fabric for your fitting pairs. Um, you know, you really need that in order to be able to assess whether the changes that you make are going to translate onto your final fabric. So those are some of the options in the pattern. Those are some fitting options. Um, now that we've discussed fitting, supplies, pattern options, I think we're ready to dive in and um, cut our pants. So I will take you down to my cutting table, get this all ready, and I'm actually gonna cut out a pair of shorts. I'm really excited to do that. Um, our weather's been pretty hot, so we will go ahead and start cutting our pants together. Okay, so I've got all my pattern pieces laid out and I'm ready to start cutting. I've got my washer pattern weights. I'm going to be making the shorts for this pair. I do have a longer full length, or well actually a cropped length pair of pants that I'll be demonstrating on as well. Um, but in this case, I've cut on the shorts line. Sometimes I'll just fold over my pattern piece um, like I did here. But in this case, this piece was really too big to do that with. Um, I've already made any fitting changes that I'm going to make for this pair and I'm just ready to go. Um, now I have folded my fabric in half. Most of these pattern pieces you need two of. Um, so I'm going to be, you know, cutting on a double layer of fabric and I've also made sure that my fabric is on grain. The greatest stretch is going this way and my selvages are at the top. Um, now, I do want to say that sometimes when you're cutting custom athletics, you want to test to see which direction has the least show through. They're printed on white, no matter what color they are, um, if it's a custom print. So sometimes the um, show through is less another direction. So that's something to kind of watch out for. But in general, you're going to be wanting to cut um, with the selvages at the top and the grain running this way. So that's what I've got here. And I'm ready to start cutting my shorts. So, cut back. Actually, went all the way around this area already. And I'm going to be making this optional lower front rise. So, that's the part where I've just kind of folded my pattern piece. And then I unfold it a bit. Okay. So, that's the main piece. Now I'm going to cut the insert. Move the camera a little bit so you can see that better. So I'm ready to cut the insert. And again, I'm doing the optional lower front rise. So I've just folded that down because at some point I may want to use the higher rise. Now, actually I had forgotten to fold this up so I'm doing the shorts length, so I don't need to cut that full, full length there. So I'm just gonna cut right here. Now, if you are cutting a pocket with a stitching line, now is when you would want to get out your Chaco marker or other marking device and mark that. Um, and then again, I'm doing the scoop pocket option um, over here. So I've hinged this actually, it's still attached, but that way if I did decide I'm gonna do the um, binding. So I fold it under the high rise cause I'm not doing that. And then I'm 
cutting off that little bit. And then I'm doing the short cut line so I can fold that piece under. I'm all about kind of trying to make your pattern pieces as versatile as possible so that you don't have to print them again later. Okay, so got that cut out. Um, and now I'm ready. Now you wanna make sure that if you are doing um, a binding or a band that you have that piece here. I have a blog post that kind of goes into detail about the differences between a band and binding, but essentially a binding is stitched, flipped over and stitched on the top, whereas a band is folded in half and stretched. There are actually a couple different ways to do binding. You can do single fold binding or double fold binding. I'm gonna be showing you a single fold binding option. We got the binding pieces. And then I'm gonna come back to the edge here. So you can see, I'm going to use the symmetrical waistband and I like to use scraps for my inner waistband. So for my out, just to save on fabric. So I'm gonna cut my outer waistband here. Um, and I'm gonna do the ultra high rise on this pair of shorts because I'm planning on wearing this with an elevate crop. And I'm gonna keep as much belly covered as possible, but still be cool. So for the symmetrical waistband, you're gonna cut two on the fold. So got that. If you were doing the asymmetrical waistband, then you would cut one front main on the fold and one back main on the fold. And then of course you're same with your lining. Okay. So I've got all those pattern pieces. Now you will notice what's missing from this pair of leggings is a gusset, which is kind of amazing because when I first tested them, I wasn't sure whether I would miss that gusset. And I can tell you that I've done quite a few activities and I actually do not miss that gusset at all. What I do miss is having new rotary cutter blades. So those are on order from Amazon, but I'll be making sure that I put those in as soon as I get them. So I've got my front piece here. I've got, oops, sorry about that. I've got my outer waistbands. I'm going to cut my inner waistbands later once I find some good scraps to use up. I've got my, oh, my inserts. I've got my binding pieces here. Sometimes that, this is why I need to change my blades. Those little last pieces don't wanna cut. So I've got my binding pieces. And last but not least, we have the scoop pocket pieces. Okay. Now, if you are, you know, not making shorts and you're going to be cutting um, some of the other options, like with the patches, you want to make sure to cut those. Um, but you should have all your pattern pieces cut now. So if you have any questions, um, let me know on the cutting and the different pieces that you need. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is um, stitches. How to sew these on a regular sewing machine versus a serger. And then I'm going to have a little bonus in there where I'm going to show you how I thread my cover stitch. So I'm going to try to um, kind of span the difference between sewing um, versus sewing machine only versus cover stitch and serger. Um, and so I will post that in a separate video. Um, but I'm glad you're following along and I can't wait to see what color blocking options you guys may have chosen. Um, I didn't talk about that much, but that's certainly something to consider is, is color blocking and um, there's a lot of fun things you can do with these pants. So I look forward to seeing what you do. You always inspire me. Um, and then we'll finish up our first day. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna talk to you about today with the Cavallo Tights Sew Along is stitches. 
and how to sew these on a regular sewing machine and how to sew them using a serger and or cover stitch combo. So a lot of times I get questions and when I post athletic wear, uh, can I make these on a standard sewing machine? And the answer is absolutely yes, you can. Um, now I knew from the beginning when I started sewing that I was going to be making a lot of athletic wear. And so having a serger and a cover stitch was something that I saved for and that was a high priority for me. And if you are planning on making quite a bit of athletics, um, I would say that that's a good you know, potential thing to consider purchasing in the future. Um, because it does lend, you know, it's, it's faster, um, it, you know, has some aspects to it that make it easier, it lends a nice professional finish. But it's absolutely not required to get a really good looking pair of athletic pants. So I'm going to talk to you first about how to sew these with just a, or with just a sewing machine um, and the kind of stitches that you would want to consider using. Now keep in mind everyone's sewing machine is different, so the stitches that are available on my machine may look different on yours. Um, so I would recommend you know, getting a little test piece of fabric, testing some of the stitches, seeing how that goes um, before you, you know, sew an entire pair of leggings with them. Now, some of the supplies that you're going to want to have if you're using a standard sewing machine um, are absolutely ballpoint or stretch needles. Okay, um, so this is not really a negotiable supply. You can't, you don't really want to be sewing knits with a standard sewing needle. Um, it's especially not athletic wear. Um, stretch or ballpoint needles have a special point to them um, that goes between the fibers instead of breaking the fibers. Um, and so it will prevent skip stitches. It'll prevent, um, you know, holes in your athletic wear. So you really want to try to find that. For most bottom weight athletic fabrics, um, I'll use a size 80 slash 12 uh, stretch or ballpoint needle, or I'll use a 75 11. Um, I don't usually find that I need anything heavier than that. If you are using a really lightweight athletic, then a 75 11 should be appropriate. Um, but for the most part, you're going to be using a medium or a heavier bottom weight fabric for the cabayas. So that said, um, another useful tool, if you are exclusively using a sewing machine to sew the caballo leggings, is a walking foot. Um, this is a little foot that attaches to your sewing machine that kind of walks along the seam. And this is a really useful tool um, to prevent stretched out or wavy seams. Um, now, if you don't have one, you can still sew them um, today, but it is something to consider. Um, usually, you know, depending on your machine, the feet can just be like 10 to 20 bucks and um, it can just make a really big difference in preventing those uh, stretched out seams. So that would be something to consider. Um, but again, if you don't have one, it's okay. Just use your standard foot. Um, now I've put together a couple of different um, stitches here that I've demonstrated on a scratch piece of fabric. And um, there's two kind of main stitches that you're going to want to sew athletic wear with. Um, so the first one is called a lightning bolt stitch. And you can see it kind of looks like a lightning bolt, okay? And then the second one is just a three-step zigzag. Um, now when I, this is a, a cotton lycra, so when I stretch it, you can see I can still stretch my fabric with both of these. I would use the lightning bolt first just because it's a lower profile stitch. It takes up less room. Um, but if you, you know, if you don't have that available, then the zigzag works as well. Okay. As opposed to a straight stitch, um, you can see they stretch vertically as well. A straight sti stitch when stretched, you know, to an extreme, which you're going to be doing um, with these athletic pants. Um, would likely snap and break. So that's a stitch that you're going to want to consider. There are also some decorative stitches that you may have available on your sewing machine um, that you can use for kind of some enhanced top stitching to mimic a cover stitch. Now keep in mind, even a reverse cover stitch is actually a mimicked stitch. Um, there's a machine, an industrial type of machine that does that look in ready to wear. Um, but that's something that even with a cover stitch that I'm emulating by doing a reverse cover stitch. Um, so, you know, if you are sewing with just a standard sewing machine, just know that, you know, you're still kind of using just a different tool. Um, so I have a couple of different stitches here. There's this one. And you can see it doesn't, it's not compromising the stretch. 
there's this one, and then there's this one. So those are three options I found on my machine that, um, you know, the lighter weight one allows for more stretch. The more thread you have in there and the more stitches, the less stretch you're going to preserve. So again, you know, do some experimentation on your fabric. Um, I am just using, you know, plain polyester thread. So I do find that I prefer brands like Guterman, um, Two Coats and Clark, um, just in terms of durability. But um, those are some stitches to consider. And I'll show you on my actual machine what they look like. And again, your machine may differ. Okay. So on my machine, that lightning bolt stitch, the one that made this, is this number 1-06 here. So that's what it looked like on my options. And then the zigzag, the one that made that, is just this 1-09, the zigzag right here. Now I found some of those specialty stitches, um, you know, some of the ones I tried were this um, 211 here, this 214 here, and then I think I had one on this side that I used, this one, this 310. So those are some of the decorative stitches. My machine has quite a few that I haven't even really played around with extensively, but those are some options that you'll want to consider when, um, if you wanna add some decorative top stitching. But it's absolutely not required. Again, it's, it is, mainly decorative. So if you're just wanting to kind of sew them um, you know, and, not, and skip the top stitching, then a zigzag or a lightning bolt stitch is going to be the best option there. If you are planning on adding a binding, I would just use a longer straight stitch, like a three, I would increase my stitch length to three millimeters or 3.5 and just do a longer straight stitch there. Um, this is a stretch kind of top stitch, and that's another option as well. It kind of goes back and forth on my machine a few times. Um, so that's another option to consider, but just keep in mind, you can definitely construct these on a standard sewing machine, um, walking foot's gonna help prevent wavy seams, but those are some of the options that you have. Okay, so the last thing that I want to address in terms of using a standard sewing machine is the twin needle. Um, now, this is something I haven't used in a while, so I actually forgot to add it and wanted to add this piece in later. Um, this is a twin needle, and it is, um, it's a stretch twin needle, actually. It's a size 75, and um, it will insert into your sewing machine. There's a, a piece at the top, so if I take it out, I can show you. So it's got this single spot at the top, so you just put it in your standard sewing machine, and then you can thread two threads here, okay? So you may need a separate thread stand if you're threading a second thread and you don't have somewhere for that on your machine. Um, but this is, it kind of creates a double row on the top and um, a little bit of a kind of mock cover stitch on the bottom. So this is something that you could definitely use for hemming your cavallo tights or for top stitching the pocket binding. So if you're new to twin needles, definitely worth practicing a couple of times, um, but it's, it can be a really good tool. So I highly recommend you know checking these little guys out. Um, you can find them at a local fabric store or on Amazon, um, and that can be just a good tool for if you don't have a cover stitch machine, but you really want to achieve that look. It also results in a stretchier hem um, than, you know, potentially even like a stretch stitch. So um, it can be a really good option. And um, I think it's worth adding to your arsenal if you're constructing the cavallo tights on a standard sewing machine. All right, well, that wraps it up for day one. We've covered quite a bit today. We've talked about supplies, anything from fabric to needles. We've talked about fitting. We've talked about options on the cavallo tights. We've talked about using exclusively your sewing machine. And also I did a few bonus videos for how to thread your Brother 1034D serger and how to thread your Baby Lock cover stitch to machine. And then finally, we got a chance to cut into our fabric. So I look forward to continuing to sew along with you tomorrow. Remember, if you're watching these videos after the event, um, everything will be available on my blog, sewingwithsarah.com, as well as my YouTube channel. You can find me at Sewing With Sarah on YouTube and Instagram as well. 
and I look forward to continuing to see what everyone creates. So make sure to um, let me know what your progress is, let me know if you have any questions, and we'll keep going and come out with some awesome tights or shorts. Have a great day.